Welcome to a special look behind the scenes in the Doctor Who Writer's Room. For the 50th anniversary, five of the biggest producers of the show's past and present have gathered to devise a truly unique episode. These special guests include executive producers Barry Letts, Philip Hinchcliffe, John Nathan Turner, Russell T. Davies, and Stephen Moffat. They have been given a title from a winning Blue Peter contestant, so now they must come up with a story to match. Gentlemen, you may begin. Okay, the title of the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who is Doctor Who, the Cow of Deadly Danger. <laughs> Very late, take us away. Yes. Uh, the Doctor and Unit discover a secret facility known as the Conglomerates of War, or C-O-W. Cow. Cow is breeding deadly and dangerous maggots, which the Doctor must find an antitoxin for, whilst negotiating a peace. The Brigadier tries to shoot the maggots to no avail, and Unit is called in to blow them up! Action by panic. <laughs> yes, yes, well, uh, by blowing up the maggots, they uncover an ancient gothic castle beneath the facilities, <laughs> which are the horrific followers of the deadly cow guards, who wish to cross werewolves and cows into sinister, dangerous werecows, <laughs> which fulfills an ancient curse. Ah. <laughs> Oh, my ancient curse! Oh, yeah, because it then is revealed that the cows are made of quote locked stone, so they're weeping wear cows. <laughs> they only move when they're milked. <laughs> so, when, when it goes, you're gonna go back in time three whole minutes, and you're gonna be forced to live your life all over again until you're three minutes older. <laughs> These three minutes turn into an 18-month hiatus. During <laughs> which, the Doctor can spend that time wondering whether he's wearing enough question marks. <laughs> Is two enough? Or two ever enough? Maybe an entire sweater, so the cow understands how mysterious he really is. Will the cow and he do a pantomime later? Uh, when he encounters the, the, the deadly cow, he and a crowded TARDIS of nine companions face the creature down. Well, they then attack the cow with love. <laughs> Each of the nine companions, mothers, fathers, maybe siblings, all join together in a family unit of love in a giant group hug, which gradually, gradually weakens the cow until it's turned back into a regular happy cow by a magical touch of Rose's hand, whose time traveler DNA solves all things, and everyone is fantastic and happy. Uh, uh, uh no. <laughs> Stay with me, Betty. Stay with me. I have such respect for you, man. Come on. Now, it's a happiness short lived till we find out that the cow falls under the influence of a weak, creepy child. Oh. And then the cow's face grows into a gas mask zombie. Oh, God, and then it touches you, and you lose your shoes for two days. <laughs> Uh, the Doctor uh, finds himself on Earth for those two days, in indoor areas only, to save money. <laughs> a consequence of the Time Lords, who set the creepy child and the cow as their proxy agents in bowler hats. Hats for havoc. <laughs> yes. uh, the, the hats and shoes are, of course, tastelessly loud and supreme, color clashing, and uh, with the, the cat and celery motif and the brims and soles. <laughs> uh, feeling manufacturedly eccentric, the Doctor promptly throws the shoes at the gas mask cow. Uh, and, and the shoes, they bounce harmlessly off the cow's force field, only to discover that the garishly colored shoes could only be the product of the mad scientist, Davos. Oh, Davos. <laughs> <laughs> Who is a man seeking to build the ultimate creation, the feet of Morbius. <laughs> the doctor must defeat him before he mutilates all footwear on the planet into a rebellious army of android duplicate shoes. <laughs> Shoes then kidnap Jill Grant, but she's free when the shoes are then shot at and blown up by units after the doctor neutralizes them with his screwdriver. drive. Now you new chaps are like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the gas mask wear cow escapes the fight by the day. The brigadier shoots any stray shoelaces for good measure. Shoes for havoc! The cow has the last lap, as Spectrox poisoning from its milk causes the doctor to regenerate. Oh, come on, I just cast Peter Capaldi, come on! <laughs> Didn't you write a story where the doctor died and regenerated five times in as many minutes? 
It was a joke! Well, now you can learn for realsies. <laughs> anyway, he regenerates, causing wild mood swings, a coordinated costume change, and an attempt to strangle his companion. Oh, a companion who he strangles with love. <laughs> Gently, lightly, and with many little kisses. They hold hands, and they take care of this cow by getting the whole world to wish really hard. And to all think the word cow. <laughs> all at the same time, which causes it to hover and glow and turn back into a little baby cow with a new chance at life. Oh, the cow was then adopted by Torchwood. <laughs> Deadly dangerous cow, ah, but yes. only after they solved their own civil war for oh, which is about does. what else? Color, uh, white, black, gray. Which will prevail? They must decide, especially with thoughts and accents made of gold. <gasps> A gold color, which just happens to be the same hue of yora as when Rose glows. The doctor's breath glows. Donna glows, Mickey glows, hell, Jackie will glow. <laughs> Sooner or later, everyone will glow at the end of an episode to defeat this deadly cow, which then recruits the help of the farting Slovene. Ah, I got you, Rusty, I got this... you. Oh, yeah, they partner with the Slovene with fart so deadly that when you smell them, you lose your hearing for two days. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of hear the farts coming? Oh. <laughs> Then the doctor rounds up a gang, he's got a gang now, you know, and then they get a bucket of air freshness to combat the creatures. Uh, the uh, farting Slovene are played by the entertainment actors like Bonnie Langford or Ken Dodd and photographed under bright studio lights so that we can take in all the lovely colour and detail as these very expensive air fresheners are used against them. <laughs> and the air fresheners grow in size to become King Kong monster-esque in their own right yes. um, after Professor Kettlewell's formula. Ah. <laughs> it enlarges them into gigantic proportions, which causes a deluge of lemon and pine tree odors. <laughs> now, the doctor quickly discovers that the weakness of the air fresheners is that they're made of cardboard, kind of like the sets in the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the gas mask where cow escapes to fight another day, uh, the, uh, the monsters are neutralized, and the heroes survive, and... Everybody else dies! Well, it's very brutal. Yes. It's so brutal. Actually, everybody but the doctor dies. Now, everybody okay. but the doctor and companion dies twice, because that's how violent we are. Oh, but then it turns out everyone's body glows with fairy oh, dust, God. and they get to magically, everybody lives! Uh, 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 take it down, take it down, Rusty, okay. Everyone's gonna live, but then they die. But then they're gonna live, and then they die, come back, live, die, come back, unless it's Rory, and then a few more times. <laughs> Nowadays, you know, I mean, it's uh, we got a crack in the universe so I can reset anything I want, and then we got the silence to make you forget the rest, so it doesn't matter <laughs> except that it happens in space. Uh, it starts in space, but then it ends up in exile on Earth uh, on an alien planet that looks like Earth but in a quarry, a bright new lit quarry, paint box red to look like an alien planet. Oh, but it's actually a reality show back simply of an alien planet set on Earth in a council state. Isn't that <laughs> what is these circuitous? Oh, no, I mean, no, 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 gentlemen, no. gentlemen. How does it all end? The Doctor prevails, of course! Excellent. So we're back in agreement. Sounds like a winning special to me. Be back next time for another edition of the Doctor Who Writer's Room. Oh, hell, just cast John Perkins.